What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Teen It Up podcast. I'm your host, AC, with DFSKarma.com and BetKarma.com. I have Sam Sherman, the co-pilot, with me as always tonight. We'll talk about the WM Waste Management Open, another fun tournament, unbelievable couple of hole in ones, a wild finish as usual. That's you know becoming. I know it sounds so cliche. One of my favorite tournaments of the year. I just love the final uh, back nine, and then of course we have the Genesis Invitational. You know, one of the I guess most prestigious. I guess you could say uh, courses on tour. One of the harder courses on tour. One of the you know type of courses where like. The best of the best are here, man, and and it's that's the exciting part is we're starting to see these uh, tournaments really thicken out with a lot of the elite talent. I think the top ten in the world are actually here uh, this week. It's Tiger's tournament as well. Um, you know, as always, we'll do a quick rewind of last week how we did in DFS, how we did in betting. Like I said, out the gate, you can check out all of our betting tables, our projections portal, our core plays, our content, and our final thoughts, which is our uh, proprietary cheat sheet platform at dfskarma.com and betkarma.com. All right, Sam, I'm going to start with you. How did your week go? DFS, betting, props, anything in the above, anything you want to talk about as far as the tournament goes? Obviously, aesthetically, a couple of hole ones went viral. It was a fun yeah, tournament, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I hit two of my top 20s, which is good because Kazai are just a great cash cow. I mean, we talked pre-pod. It was annoying that because of the number and because I thought he's going to be so chalk in DFS, which he was, I just didn't bet Scotty because he was like 22 when I got to him. But good for him. Like, I, it's weird. Like, I was, it's one of those weeks where I feel like I was on so many of the right guys. I wasn't on Cantlay, but then like a couple of missed cuts. Like, Berger totally buried me. I know he buried you. Uh, and, it just it was a weird one. I what I actually really what kind of decided my week a little bit. I really needed Russ Henley to miss the cut. And of course mm-hmm. he makes it on the number and on Sunday shot. It, that was annoying. But I don't know, that tournament, dude, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. It is that I think it's I have seen people, I think there are all these people who bitch and everything like that. And maybe it's a bad take. I don't know if I want a that house that style of tournament like rowdy every week of the year, but I think it is such mm. a it's just electric atmosphere. I mean, it's just great. And those finish yeah, are great. Absolutely. I might be getting old because I feel like, you know, when watching those hole-in-ones that there was no place I'd rather not be, ironically, than the 16th hole. And I was just thinking about it like, man, I get it. It's awesome. You're watching the best of the best. You're yeah, I'd be sick, but then I'm drenched in beer. Then I'm drenched yeah. in beer and I'm like sticky the rest of the day. It's like, which I mean, is funny, but yeah, no, I don't. I, I agree. The play, the play would be either you're in one of those corporate suites or you're kind of obviously no, you gotta get going the box. around the whole course, you know? Yeah, no, I was um, someone, I mean, not to mention, if you don't have a box, you got to get there at like two in the morning. Yeah, like, I'm not. That's I'm not, not for me. Doing, I'm not doing that. Um, but yeah, this week is, this week's pretty awesome. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned this Tigers tournament. It's funny. Tiger's never won here, and he always says, like, this is such a ball strike. This is such a tough course. I mean, these guys can go low as they can go low anywhere. But it's funny because the greens are just really, really tough to put on. And I think what gets people is you have, like, you know, so the first hole is, like, the easiest hole on the tour. It's, like, a downhill 500-yard par 5. And basically, if you don't birdie it, you're losing strokes to the field. But because there's, like, that one, there's number 10, which is that make kind of drive a hard It's, like, my favorite hole on tour. But the course is sneaky long because you have a couple of these really short holes. And so there's a lot of holes at like 450 plus. And so not that you can't succeed, but there's definitely, I think, a pretty decent edge, you know, to the driving distance, things like that. And guys who keep it in the fairway and not in that rough, it's kind of thick. So, yeah, last California, I think this is the last California event of the season. So should be a good one. This field is crazy, crazy low. Sorry, you're muted. Yeah, I'm back. I'm back. That was a good breakdown, though. You know, I mean, that, that's kind of like the same angle. Obviously, I'm looking into. It. I looked at my little famous black book on some of the notes uh, that I've made throughout the last several years. But now I'm getting to the point in my career where, I mean, kind of like you, Sam. I just feel like I have some of these bigger tournaments just memorized. I know exactly what I want to do. I know the yeah. bets I want to make. I know the players I want to play. And I think it really does help us along that we keep saying every week on this podcast. It, it is. It's a journey. It's not. I mean, golf is not just a week to week thing. I mean, sure, form de- definitely matters, no doubt about it. We look into the data, um, but this is more of, and we'll talk about some of the guys that you know. I'm thinking more of their long term type play. To, to take a quick re- rewind of myself, obviously, 
um, you know, if you're in our chat or anything, like, yeah, I, I hit Scotty Scheffler at 30 to one. Um, I tried to get my bets out earlier in the week. That was oh, yeah, I barely favorite. lead. Sorry, third in a row. God. Third, that is pretty ridiculous. I mean, so I've gotten some DMs, and I just know it's almost. Let's be real, Sam. I'm not going to win four in a row. I mean, yes, I have my bets out there live at dfscarma.com. You can check them out in our Discord chat. But it is it's getting to a point of no return. I, I will say we you and I talked about this in the snow in the open. Like if we can catch a hot streak, there's no better feeling mm-hmm. in in betting of any sport. I mean, I don't make this kind of money in other sports. Like, sure, I have ups and downs. I have good streaks. You know, and NFL is probably better than NBA um, by a wide margin, actually, compared to MLB, ironically. Um, but, man, golf, I just – my bankroll is just growing astronomically right now. So feel free, you know, drop into our Discord chat, dfscarmen.com, and you can check those bets out. But, yes, Scotty made up for a terrible week in DFS. And let me just start there. I did have Scotty in my main DFS lineup, but you know what? In DFS, that doesn't matter all the time. And that's why Sam and I are on here harping. Get into betting if you guys aren't. I mean, Spike was DMing me today. And the fact that, you know, he doesn't even understand it. It's not a knock on him. It's just bringing to the attention that people don't understand that you, in the golf world at least, and I think you could probably parlay this pun intended into some other sports, you need a hedge. You need some you need some activity in the props or the outright betting market because you can really make up for a bad week. I had a bad week in DFS. Like I MME'd. This is uh, my first uh, bad MME week. I think, you know, if I had a, you know, 1,500 in, I only got like 350 back and I lost my main lineup. So it wasn't a good DFS week, uh, but the, the outright win definitely helped. All right, let's get into the Genesis Invitational at the Riviera, one of my favorite courses on tour. Um, Sam, you gave a good breakdown again, just to reiterate, like, yes, driving distance, of course, ball striking around the green game is a thing here. Like these are the elite of the elite players. I mean, people are going to get in trouble, um, on this golf course. I'm just kind of looking for that more well-rounded game. Um, and, and like I said, out the gate, I think let's think more long-term too. It doesn't have to be just short-term form. All right. With that being said, as always, we're going to kind of start up top. Let's start from. Mr. Good old DJ, man, I haven't seen DJ all year. It is scary just not knowing of him of all people, you know, what's been going on. Has he been playing? I honestly, Sam, I don't know. Is he been, was he playing over in Saudi Arabia? Yeah, he's he's played overseas. So yeah, I track, I try to keep, you know, in terms of when you look at the projection port, I have all like the PJ restarts, but then I also have every, like I have all the worldwide starts because it gives, yeah, better. And he's, I mean, his last five, if you look at his last five on tour, we got to last season, you'll see like 125th, which I think was at, uh, I don't know which one that was at, but, you know, in his last five starts, he has two eighths, two eighth place finishes, a 25th and a sixth. I mean, he's obviously continued to play well. <laughs> Him, I think it's funny when all this talk about like the, the Saudi league and everything like that, and I'm, DJ's like in the middle of it, but like doesn't really know what's going on. He's like, yeah, I'll just... <laughs> play or whatever but yeah i think he's fine i mean god we talk about some guys with course history i mean it, it i don't know i don't know if there's a single person i've seen with a track record like this of course i mean yeah it's insanity. in the last in the last 10 years i think i wrote it up what is it in the last 10 years he has missed one cut he has one win he has and then the rest literally he has seven top tens and a 16. There are some knocks though, Sam, against, at least in my opinion, on DJ right now. And again, he's probably going to come here in top five. I mean, whatever. But I don't like that I haven't been visually seeing him, right? I mean, we are getting to the point in the season where I like to watch my golfers. That's why I made the joke. Like, yes, I kind of was aware he was in Saudi Arabia, but I'm not following over there. Like, you know, there's not there's not that much data out there for it. Um, I don't know, man. I feel like this is a little bit different. I mean, he hasn't played at all. Usually he plays at Pebble Beach. You know, you, usually we see something of DJ. That's the only kind of asterisk I'll put there. Um, you know, I am going to MME again this week, and I will have DJ in my pool. I mean, I'm not fading it, but I'm not starting my main lineup with him. There's just too many red flags. What else are you looking at at top? No. We don't even need to talk. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say, I agree with you. I mean, I actually thought it would be one of those things. I thought a lot of people would kind of think exactly how what you just said. And that, you know, I haven't seen him, but it seems like he's going to be pretty chalk. And I get it, given the course yeah. history. So I won't start with him either. I mean, I will say to your point of if he's played, I mean, he played, so I forgot, he came T25 at the Farmers. So that was a couple okay, weeks ago. Okay, he did. That's my bad. He played the Saudi International. I think that was, uh, 
was that two weeks ago? Was that when Varner won? Yeah, I so he's been playing, but it's still not. Like I don't like a T25 though. at the Farmers, though. I mean, to me, that's just, no. again, 45th at the CJ Cup, but that was last October. All right, Morikawa, I feel like, is easily – I hate saying this – easily fadeable. I mean, famous last word. Please uh, bring that out. Um, in yeah. Paging cold takes when he wins this thing. But, dude, if listen, Sam, I got to X players out of my player pool, and I know you do too. I'm actually more Kyle out. I, I just am. I mean, ah, that's yeah. going to the price point. I'll too. play him. I'll play him if he if he's not going to be. I have him right now like 15 percent owned. If he was going to be like 10 to 12, like I would pivot off of DJ onto him. But I agree with you. I mean, at that price point, obviously Markov can and will win anywhere. And I don't. I have nothing. No issue with him, obviously. But like, yeah. I don't know. The course history he hasn't played that great. His short game is still can be suspect. And it's like at that price point. I mean, I would honestly ownership not not taking that into account. I'd probably just rather play DJ or Xander or drop down. So I agree with you. I think that Justin Thomas is going to be like not owned. No, and you know what? We talked out the gate about hedging, betting, DFS. I made a commitment to myself. I just man watching that tournament down the stretch. I you know he didn't get too much TV time. JT was freaking on fire over the weekend. I mean. It was almost one of those patented major comebacks. You know, he's, I feel like he's had those throughout his career where he's like, it's just a classic back. putter. Yeah, it's a classic. You know, like, and like, never, yeah, he just couldn't putt. You can't, shit, so. can't count JT on. And, you know, just looking at the stats again, I knew he was going to be kind of low owned. And yes, I'm probably not going to start my main lineup with JT as much as I love him. And I'm hyping him up right now. He ranked second, you know, in my models. He's in the last 24 rounds, which is a lot of rounds. I mean, he's first in opportunities gained, seventh in strokes gained, T to green second in DraftKings points. Uh, he's sixth in ball striking, eighth in approach. Age, I mean, <laughs> and, yeah, and again, it's just, just about the putter, dude. Game, and I don't know. I know. The only, my only worry is his off the tee game has been a little sporadic, which I think last week wouldn't have really mattered. But this week, I think it'll could hurt. I mean, his course history is weird, too. It's like he's missed the last two cuts. Before that, he had like two T10s in a row. Yeah, so. I'm not really worried about that, though. I feel like, and again, I actually x him out of my player pool last week almost for similar reasons, but that was only because I had to take more chances last week. I feel like just the way that like the builds were setting up, you know, and, and again, I'll go right to Cantley right now. Yes. I think Cantley's an amazing fit. Yes. He's, he he really is unbelievable, dude. I mean, he's all, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm not, I'm not, playing but either. if we're talking about his stock, you want to talk about short term, we have to nitpick here. I mean, Cantley, even though he's right there, I mean, man, there's some, He's having some issues down the stretch on the weekend, the last couple of weeks. And JT, I feel like, is ascending. So, again, if we're talking stocks, I feel like JT's ascending. Cantley a little bit is, uh, you know, I mean, if you look at the stats, Cantley's, if you look at the stats, Cantley's kind of been hitting it like shit, honestly. I know. He, I mean, he, yeah. he's just so good at putting and everything that just keeps him alive. I mean, you know, can he keep it up? I mean, probably. Probably, but, again, but I don't know. I just see. I don't love. Uh, he almost never plays back to back, which is why I didn't like him last week. I really don't know. How I feel about Cantlay playing three weeks in a row. Right. He's kind of so a coward. Top, to summarize for me, I mean, dude, you and I don't even need to talk about Rom anymore. We we tell people every just week. Play Rom. Just play. Play Rom. Rom. If you fade him in MME, you're, de- you're you're not dead, but you're making a a, a a big mistake if you're MME in most weeks, in my opinion. You just need he's to play come, him every week. He's coming to. I think four of his last 10 and he's literally not playing well. He's literally not making any putts and is coming like in the top 10. And is so to summarize for me, it's Rom, JT and DJ. And uh, that's what I'm doing up top. Let's go to the next range. I'll let you start. Go. Let's go from Xander and we'll go all the way down to Mr. Popular Willie Z. Yeah. I'm going to finally play Xander this week. So that means I would probably fade him. I mean, I think, he with a loaded field, he might not be mega chalk, and he's played really well here. His ball striking, I will say, even though I'm not the biggest fan of his, like he probably should have won last week. He you know makes yep. a lot more luck box putts than that. So I do like Xander. I think he's probably where I'll start in cash, most likely, him or DJ. But my fair play of the week, and I'm not alone, is probably Rory. I think Rory to me is so interesting because if you know, looking at my own, if you look at like a stat model on any tout.com site or whatever you use like for dj <laughs> or rory or whatever his stats will look terrible because he hasn't been playing on the pj tour with shot link yeah. but like rory has been playing and has been playing like really well so can we I talk about really rory a little bit more actually because i want to hear a little bit more why are you and again i bet him you know you bet him 
we're on the same wavelength, but why was he so bad like the last year and a half? And I admit, he wasn't so bad. He was not Rory like. For why? His what's going on? Like, why? Well, he, his, I know his short game. Right no, similar to DJ, he just couldn't really putt. I mean, his short game was weird, and I think he was kind of. But I mean, if you look at it's why I'm like higher on DJ because his putting all, all last year is bad. But Rory, in his last five worldwide starts, I mean, he has a third, a sixth, a win, a 12th, and 18th. Like, you would forget that Rory won like 12 months ago. So uh, he's played fine here. Last year, he burned me and you. We were talking about that pre pod. But oh, Rory, God. just like, not that this is like a stupid thing to say because like someone like Rory or Morikawa or Rom fits like quote unquote any course. But like, Rory, like, is the best driver of the ball probably on tour. That's key here. He mm -hmm. knows how to get up and down on these greens. And I like that he hasn't, although it seems like he's, like, taking a lot of time off, he really hasn't. And it's not like he's flying from, like, Middle East to here in, like, a three-day stretch. So, yeah, I don't know. I I just feel pretty high on Rory this year. Um, and I just think that, like, this price point to me, given, like, you know, if you, we're just to take like out of 100 tournaments, how many does he win? It just seems like the price is like too cheap, even given the field. Like, why is he cheaper yeah. than Xander? Like, he's way better than Xander. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what I thought when I saw him at 9,700. That was my first thought. I was like, huh, he's not even in the um, 10K range. And that yeah, was like, I don't uh, listen, I made a little bit of a late bet on him, but it, the line didn't move much. It was still 22 to 1. I just. I kind of wanted to bet him, and I do this sometimes too with, with these other guys. Like, I wanted to bet him to remind myself, even if I don't end up playing him in my main lineup, that I am all in on on Rory. Like, even though I make yeah. XYZ bets, I can't always play these guys for whatever reason in my, my main lineup. Like, I'm going overweight Rory in MME this week. I got the bet on him. I am going to try to fit him in my main lineup. I don't know if I can do it. Just yet, well, the yeah, thing is, pricing is so soft. I don't know why they did this because like a it's like a major pricing, but like you can play Rom and Rory like pretty easily. I think most people when, are gonna play Rom, probably Xander or Rom and uh, Willie. Just Z, my but. humble opinion: when all these type of guys up top here are all like hypothetically, theoretically in form, I mean it's Rom, JT, and Rory. Just in my opinion, the, those are the three best players in the world, regardless of what their ranks are. So, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like there's a discount. I'd say Mark is up there, but, yeah, I generally agree with you. Yeah. Let's keep moving on, though. Um, let's just talk about Cameron Smith real quick. You know, I haven't historically played him too much. I, I, I did say at the Sony Open that I wanted to start getting more exposure this year. He ended up winning that tournament. And, you know, shout out to the YouTube fam who's, you know, you guys can check this out as well. Projections Portal is a premium product now. We do a lot of podcasts with our other sports that showcase this as well. In my opinion, this dumbs down the research. It, you know, hashtag makes life easier. If you just look at the value column, I promise you guys, week to week, if you don't know golf as much as us, just go to the value column on the projections portal and pick the guys that are sticking out like a sore thumb and bright orange. Cameron Smith right now is our number one projected value play of the week. And if you rewind all these podcasts and every time I bring this up, they generally are like the number one play. Like the math is correct. So I will say that Cameron Smith is probably underpriced, and you will as well. And maybe you should just take that free square and play him in cash games. I mean, he just seems like he sets up really well here. I mean, his old, again, I'm looking for all-around game this week. And to me, Cameron Smith is like Patrick Reed, but, like, good. Dude, it's like, what does he do well? He, number one, has more distance than people think. He literally yeah. is first in the entire field in birdies, and he has, like, an elite short game. Like, I... It's funny, people just don't view Cam Smith like that because he's not as like, much of a household. Cam Smith, in my opinion, is probably a top five player in the world, maybe like yeah. top seven. But like he just like is doesn't have the name value of like a Rory or Xander. But yeah, I think he's very mispriced. He clearly, like, and also this is more of a narrative, I guess, but he just plays really well in these strong fields. Like strong he does, fields, dude. So. I mean, the last couple yeah. of years, you're hundred percent right. And I've I've been underexposed, right? I, I ironically enough, geez, I hope I don't jinx this. I said the same thing about Burger starting the year. I'm like, I got to play more Burger in this calendar year. I mean, it's same thing. Like Burger was not really a household name, but he is, in my opinion, one of those elite, elite plays. Of course, he burned me last week, but that's how I think about Cam Smith. All right, let's go to the Holy Grail, Mr. Scotty Scheffler, who is tired this week, Sam. He's very tired. He had a long Confirm week. tired. He celebrated. He's tired. So to all the DFS people out there, they won't play him because he's very tired. So, yes, I'm being sarcastic, but, I mean, dude, 
That is not a thing in DFS calls. Somebody freaking send me the date on that. He's, he's going to be like 6% owned this week. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, the tire thing is funny. I don't know. I will say it's sometimes I like just blindly think anyone like after their first win, maybe, but I don't know. Scotty doesn't seem like a, you know, hardcore partier really, but Look at I don't know. Movie. It's one of those, it's one of those, exactly. It's one of those things where like I'll probably burn, I'm going to get burned by fading chalk. You know, he's not chalk, but like, I don't know. I just, I like guys around him more, so I probably won't play him. Yeah. But like, because of the ownership, he's probably the right play. I mean, but Sam, you do make, I mean, historically, you like to make, like, say, like a three max build, like three lineups. And mm -hmm. I mean, my God, if you're a three max type builder or who's ever listened making three lineups, or you're a lethal GPP player, shout out to Matt, who may or may not be listening. I mean, you want to win a NFL tournament, $75,000. Like, Matt's the type of player who, We'll play DK Metcalf at four percent known. Like to me, that's Scotty Scheffler. I mean, this course sets up absolutely perfect for him. Almost probably better than last week's course. And and I do think, yeah. and again, sometimes we compare us amateurs to the pros, even though we're not the same. But Sam, you know when you are vibing with your irons and your drivers on, and you're you're playing really well. What do you want to do? You want to keep playing. Like you want to play the following week because you've got it right now. I don't yeah. know, man. Like. It's, it's kind thing. of funny. I'm pretty sure wasn't Scotty like three under after the cut. Like I'm pretty sure he Dude, barely. He made went on cut. That's fire. what's even crazier. Yeah. He caught fire. Yeah. I saw a stat that might have been dated golf. He was like one percent chance to win going into Saturday. But uh, yeah. Anyways, let's move on. I love Hideki. I'll just leave it at that. I mean, I want to start my main build with Hideki this week. He looks like, according to our ownership projection projections in the projection portal. It looks like he's gonna be like lower owned than I thought. I love Hideki this week though. I think he checks all the Yeah, boxes. people just don't people just don't play him for no reason. I don't know why. I mean, it's because he's still thought of as like he's still a bad putter, but he's putted like so much better over the last six. But season. he's good on Poe though. I mean he's fine. Yeah, no, he, he's like he's he'll always like have those tilting misses, but like people just don't play him because they always kind of think of him as like guy you missed all three first. Um there's zero chance I play Brooks or Jordan Speed. Like, <laughs> Zero, I mean, Speeth is like the auto X out of <laughs> out of my MME. Yeah, pool. like the only reason I play Speeth, if I was playing like 20 max, I'd play maybe Speeth in a couple just because of ownership and like just raw talent. But like this does not feel like a course. I do think Brooks is a trap. I mean, you know, he's probably not going to be a lot of the data people don't play Brooks anyways as is, but he got a lot of face time. Brooks is like me season, out there. So. He's like having his 120 yard wedges that are missing the green. That's like literally my I mean, problem. That's yeah, he, he looked really bad. He made a lot of putts to keep him in it. Um, but yeah, I mean, Brooks, um, easy. And, you know, again, you want to be a true MME player, true leverage. Yeah, you go, you play Brooks at 10% because I don't know. I mean, whatever. This will burn um, me. I once again, I mean, I'm just, I'm not playing a chalk Willie Z. I get it. They, that's my only reason is ownership. There's nothing like that says he's like that. I mean, I. The we could have our first, still horrendous, but yeah. We could have our first disagreement here. I mean, I hear you on listen this isn't That's anything is. direct at you i just feel like i can't and you shouldn't as well we shouldn't always try to fade all the chalk because i try not to worry about that and i don't think you do but damn man just looking into his stats it's like it seems like he's gonna set up really well here didn't you bet him or did you just bet him in case he freaking actually does win no i, I thought you bet him. Well, oh, he, no i it's more like Dude, if I can get Cam Smith for like the same or actually play less ownership for three dollars more, like I would play him every time. But play both, you know. I yeah, do think he's a, the problem. I think he's. I, a I, I can't eat. I just can't eat all the chalk because like I'm already going to be eating chalk with no. Rom, DJ, Come, Rory, Xander. I, I I'm giving you a homework assignment. I want you to look into that. I do think that he is a lock this week to hit value. I'm not saying. I mean, I did bet he's him all, to win. But he's, but he's also a lock to miss like every putt. That's the other problem. Yeah, but what if they're all birdie putts? You know, or I mean, he's ah, man. You know, he I, he did come fifteenth here last year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. digging ahead, do, do a little do a little rendezvous on that. I just don't uh, really play him. I just don't really ever play him. Honestly, I just think he's don't. Trying. Hey, listen, me and you both. We have these. Sometimes we fall into these traps of dude. Trust me, I do the same thing with some players. I feel like this week. Remember, I think it was Pebble, and then he withdrew with COVID. I don't remember if it was Pebble or not. Me and you both were like, easy fade, like, duh. He was like the second highest owned player in the field. I didn't like the core setup for him. I think this is completely different. Now we're seeing him more to depress price. I know there's a lot of talent in the field, but this is a Willie Z course. I mean, this is 
I, dude, I mean, this is to me, it's like an easy top 25. And I mean, that's pretty much hitting value, like no question. So, all right, let's move on. You always like Sam Burns. I mean, he's kind of burning people, no pun intended, recently. Oh, no, he, um, no, dude, I, no, he's, I, fa- I had him as a fave last week because I thought he's been, yeah. I, I won't play I mean, him. I don't, he clearly, like, I mean, last year, I pretty, wasn't he? He was leading us last yeah, year. Going he was. Back he he, was. Gagged it. he doesn't I'm look good right him. now, though. Uh, I will let's play Sung Jay because I'm just going to say. Let's talk about a guy you like. I like him a lot. I did think about betting him. Again, I, it's just one of those things. Like DFS, you can't play everybody. You can't bet everybody. I really wanted to play Sung Jay uh, and bet him. I will definitely be overweight Sung Jay at least two Yeah, his, his bad course history will keep his ownership down, which is good. If that he doesn't really bother has, me. I'm pretty sure one of me missed on the number, so I don't really care. Not to sound like we're beating the, the drum here, but dude, Sung Jay has an all around game, and that's what I'm looking for this week. Absolutely. I mean, he's number one in bogey I'm, avoidance. He's top 25 in everything I'm looking at, except for, ironically, birdie or better, which is fine. All right. Talk about freaking Bubba for a quick second. I mean, I, I know I no words. He, he actually I, looked, he looked good last week. <laughs> I mean, oh, he looked great. He's kind of putt. No, I mean, he's, he's playing really well. I like him, I think, as a bet more. I don't know. It, I'm a little yeah. surprised at his. I have what his projected ownership at. I thought he's gonna be mega chalk. Maybe it's because he's Same. like kind of more expensive. But if he's gonna stay in this eight to ten, I'm. I would definitely more likely to play him. But if he was gonna be like fifteen, I don't know. It's. I mean, you can't really say anything bad because he's won this thing three times. But I don't know if he gets steamed up. It's so easy to fade. Plus, he's not going to. Both, he's gonna be low on. Aren't we both just playing Fino? In GPPs, I can't my main lineup, but yeah. No. Yeah, I think Finau, I bet him this week because we're talking in Discord. I think it's hilarious. Finau is 30 to 1 to win the Masters or 33, and he opened this week at 60 to 1 to win this tournament. So I don't really <laughs> understand. Yeah. That. But yeah, I maybe I also may just use it as a bet and just fade in DFS because he's yeah, he's kind of like Xander where his ownership will show what it is, but then he's always somewhat um the reality is Finau, if you just dig into the stats, is a tro some, dude, something he's like there's something wrong. I mean, I love him. I mean, we all know that, but I listen, I'm gonna have ownership on him in, in MME because I bet him and, and I wanna go there. I don't know about Max Homa, dude. I mean, I just never no, really played I, him. I, I never mean, I never play Max Homa. I get it. I, no, I never play last him. year. That's I never whatever. play him and it never really burns me because he's never that high owned, so I don't really care. Adam Scott though, that I have chalk I will eat. Yes, I will eat that chalk and I will love it, and it's gonna taste really yummy in my tummy because yep. listen, Adam Scott. I think again, I don't know if you can pull it up. I don't know if it was twenty nineteen. When he did he win here? Ago. Like one two years ago. So I'll never forget. Um, Adam Scott was like it was like COVID, right, or something like. And the dude didn't yeah. touch a club worldwide. He was just at home with his family. In the interview, like three hours before the tournament started, he's like, "This is my favorite." course of the year and it just is what it is like and the vibes came out he just won nobody was playing him in dfs you know generally he will get owned this week but i bet he's not as owned as we think because it's not the like last he's been 10 years the world on fire the last 10 years he's played eight times and made the cut eight times yeah he's he's his average he's his average finish out. his average finish is like t15 again well, he's awesome, I, probably just, man. I, I probably just cursed him to the to the sun but i don't know if you take Scott, again, I played Scott last week because I like being early on him. I mean, it was a very classic. I think it was Saturday or Sunday where he missed like five five foot putts. His, but by the way, the data didn't look good, but don't overthink it, in my opinion. If you guys are actually data diving, because this is this is a, a scenario where I don't care. He didn't look that great. He did make the cut last week. I don't know the data in Saudi Arabia. I saw he had somewhat okay finishes, but I'm playing Adam Scott this week. So. Dude, are you kidding me? You he know finished what? top ten twice before last. You know what's funny is people are playing Matt Fitzpatrick. I just don't get it. Like he's another guy. Ass. I, mean, I, I just, ass. Yeah. Oh, I no, auto X him out of every chance. MME pool. I mean, you know, unless my it's one, one thing of those is I get it. Short courses. He, he plays well at long courses, weirdly, and good fields. But like, mm. it's again one of those things. Not only do I think, I mean, like he's kind of a coward, but like I would much rather play Adam Scott or Taylor Gooch or Leishman yeah. or him or Neiman. So like, I don't really. Taylor Gooch just continues to defy odds of gravity. I mean, he actually ranks really high in the projections portal I'm looking at right now. He does. He tried to tell you last high. week. You didn't listen. I tried to tell you. I know. You. I, you know what? I deserved Max Payne, though, on my uh, DFS lineup. Everybody, I, literally, I feel like everybody I played missed the cut in my main lineup minus Scotty. It was the funniest thing ever. I was like in last place all week. But yeah, if you look at the PGA betting table, there he is, Taylor Gooch yet again. I mean, 
you know, just continues to pop even in betting models. Um, wow, Willie Z really pops there. Um, and there's another guy we'll come I to like, later. I like Leishman. I know you don't. I will say he'll probably burn me. But I, what I player I think is interesting, even though it's off my stick. I think Russ Henley is interesting. And I. I don't know about Henley. I mean, I didn't really play him last week. Of course, it burned me, but uh, but Nick, he doesn't really right have here. any like flaws in his game. Uh, Neiman, I think, is doesn't. interesting. I almost bet Neiman. Yeah. I worry about his short game. His short game is really bad, so I worry. That's the same reason I probably won't play Kokrak. So Neiman, we're getting to the point in the podcast where like, there's the people that don't listen to us historically are they're getting into golf. Listen. Neiman you is should, a because there's some ridiculous names right now. But Neiman dude, is Neiman's a short game is so bad. Neiman Neiman long term is I mean, you know this, Sam. He's I feel like he is a rising star. It's just it potentially might take him a little bit longer. And that's the first thing I saw when I got to this price range. I'm like, all right, I'm going three x on Neiman. It's like not even a, a debate. He crushes the ball. He looks like a little skinny small guy, but I'm not worried about distance at all. Um, you're right. Can we, get to, the chalk, can we get to the chalk lightning rod already? Who's gonna no, I'm not even playing. I'm not playing him, dude. I'm not playing Thomas Peters. Oh, no. He, no, no. He's the second lightning rod. The first one is no, Paul, Paul Casey. Casey. Yeah, I, I, I mean, learned. that isn't – it is a ridiculous price, but, like, it. I will say chalk Paul Casey has literally never once played out. Like not it's once not even played. that. I mean, dude, he's getting older. I mean, yes, he's a good player. Yes, he's probably going to make the cut. But – Again, we, I'm just thinking more long term here. I just feel like Paul Casey in this field, like I know the price is nice. I feel like that's maybe he should be priced around 8,200. So yeah, yeah. I, I mean, get dude, he's been playing he's value, like pretty but, well. I mean, he's finished his last five or 24th, 12th, 9th, 31st, 25th, like over his last five tournaments. I really don't think he's that much better than you than we think though right now, dude. I just think he's is who he is at this no. point. Like yes, he's gonna finish 38th. You're right. No, he's, he's like cash. He's, he's a finish. cash. He's a cash guy. Now the GP but, guy, that's that's Kevin Na. I might bet Kevin Na, dude. I know he's been bad. This is such a course that Kevin Na just wins because if I'm looking he's up so Sunday, annoying, Kevin winning, I'm gonna be pissed. No, it's like one of those things where like he'll come first to last because like his long irons are so good. He might like shoot eight under on the first day or eight over you don't really know but like that's just what he's about. uh Seamus this, power 75 is hysterical it is he's hysterical literally... i mean i'm probably i think this is the first mega alarm of the podcast i am probably going to go four or five x on him in mme and i don't care whatever he misses the cut whatever so be it i mean he should. he's at horrible price that's ridiculous why is why is he ch- I mean... why is he cheaper than uh I'm so, like, why is he cheaper than Matthew Fitzpatrick? When's last time? Well, that's what I'm saying, dude. Like a lot of these guys, even in this upper 7K range, this is what I'm saying about the Paul Casey thing. It's a shorter field. You know that. I know that. There's going to be more six of six lineups as is. That's why I don't worry about. I think that the Paul Casey scenario is more important for a full field, but I don't think it's as important as we think this week. Like I still am looking for scores because more than likely, knock on wood, we're going to get a nice five of six lineup. Like yes, we would love a six of six. But if we can get a nice five of six, you get the winner in there. You're probably going to cash anyways. As is, um, I'm dude, pissed. Everyone ruined. Everyone ruined Thomas Peters. Like he was going to be a good no, play. Now everyone knows about him. him. No, dude, he was. He is was going to be a great play. He's won like two times in his last like, five. Starts, I know, but I don't like no, playing, playing guys. Like it, no, no chance. We, because dude, Peters fits this course perfectly. But given his temper, he could make a triple and then like shoot eighty. Like he gets, I've been so, he's busted by mind. the Peters chalk in the past, and I'm, I just, I'm not doing it. I'll let the other people who are all tweeting about him. Um, I mean, in cash, I'll probably eat the Luke List chalk because his course does fit him. I'm freaking did you pissed just, that he's gonna be owned, dude. I mean, I thought see, that I was getting. Because dude, why is he 74? Why is he 7400? See, I prefer him way more than Thomas Peters. Like, it's not even a, a debate, you know. By the way, and like, look at the guy right between them is going to be five percent owned. I can't do it. He's oh so my god! Cool. If that motherfucker, oh, five percent. Would it shock Patrick anyone Reed though if Patrick Reed just won no. the tournament? No, no, not at all. And that's why I hate him. Um, Luke List. By the way, did you see last week? He completely remembered who he was. He was yeah, lost he, like six strokes putting. It was so funny. Good. It was he like got it out so of the classic. Yeah, no, like he like he used them all up when we bet on him, which is good. And now he's back to like. Um, Nucleus is 
absolutely popping in the karma value model. I mean, the the, mo- the karma value column, like I said, guys, it does the work for you. You don't want to listen to Sam and I. Subscribe, read the content, final thoughts, and then just look at the um, panel, the projection portal. This hurts my soul, but Corey Connors is off. Can't play him. I know. Fuck, he's so no, cheap. I get his price he's is dumb. Really. I get it's dumb, but I just I can't. I'll just eat the chalk with Lanto because he's playing really well. See, if Lanto's chalk, I mean, I kind of have him penciled in right now to my main build. I know it's early in the week. I'm probably not going to keep it. But the same if price. He's clean, I'm not. Dude, he might be a little more, and I think Mav McNeely is such the right play. I know. He was but like, he what happened to him? Did he get hurt? Like, uh, no, he just like withdrew because he probably didn't want to play. He doesn't have an injury. Dude, he was Dude. like 25 owned at like 9,000, and that was 7,200 and did like seven. Like, and oh, everybody oh was God. playing him. This is this is like a typical DFS like so classic. Yeah, you know, like I had no interest and I didn't burn me, and now I'm like so back in. I thought about that yeah. actually. So wait, but let's be serious a second. Like I'm looking at his stats. I mean, his he hasn't played. He wasn't played great. bad. I mean, no, but he hasn't played bad. He's made, dude. I think he's finished top forty in seven straight events where he's made all the cuts and like. He crushes the ball, right? Yeah, his driving distance game. Yeah, but is like very at, good. I'm just saying, it, it, the difference is at this price point, the same thing where it's like at 9,000, I faded Mav because he was chalk. And at 9,000, you probably need a T20 or better to pay off value. Now we're at 72. It's like it comes T29. Like, obviously, you're hard to win a tournament with a guy out there, but like that doesn't hurt you at all because he's so cheap. What's his short game like? Do you have a perception on his short game besides just looking at uh, he's, that? He's like a, he's could be a fine putter. He's a pretty bad. Uh, scrambler, but uh, I did think about him. I, I had I thought he would actually might get some ownership, but I guess you're right. Like I'm surprised at Lanto. Like don't get me wrong, I like Lanto, you know. But man, I mean, if Lanto's getting steamed, like yeah, give me the cheaper guy around here. I mean, our boy Cameron Tragali's not there, there, dude. You know who's been playing super hot that nobody talked about is our McKenzie boy Siwoo Kim. No, fuck, fuck him. <laughs> Siwoo Kim is just. Every weekend, somehow he's on the leaderboard for like ten minutes. But hey, he's like he makes his yeah, way his up the leaderboard. Kind of off though. I mean, what? But how is he doing it? I mean, I feel like it's every. I mean, dude, look at his history. He's playing well. I mean, yes, he had lost a stroke last week with the approach, but uh, I see, woo, man. I mean, I don't know. This guy just he doesn't go away. We all think he was going to. Um, I would rather play a well mega. Here. I could rather play a mega tilt guy at seven thousand who has torched everyone in the past. He's great. No, Johnny Vegas, obviously. No, dude, EVR, such an elite. Yeah, I looked. I took. I took a hard look in EVR. The stats are really good for him. Like he's found a corner, and you know me. I remember in Minneapolis last year. I mean, I went way overweight EVR. I think he missed the cut. That was I've so had some funny. Historical. I've had his, some historical EVR moments, but I've also played him in some like you know, major championships or something like that, like a, a big $4,000 buy-in. I like him this week. He's he's already in my player I, pool. I love that people are playing Molinari because it's California. Like, he actually belongs to this course, so everyone's playing yeah. Molinari. And I'm playing like, a little bit of Molinari. You know I can't help that. I mean, come on. Um, I really thought he would get more steam than he is, but people may realize how dumb it is that the biggest trap of the entire week is Aaron Wise at 6,700 because the real play is Sebastian Munoz at 6,700. And before Dude, you say, I always talk about really him, which good. I do. He's been striping it. He's just been putting like absolute trash. So my first build on Monday when pricing came out, like I had JT in there. You know, I had I had Rory, and I I ended up rounding out the lineup with whoever else, but Munoz. I mean, again, you're always writing him up. We're always kind of jokingly talking about him, but he yeah, but this time really kind sense. of fits the course well. Like I mean, he's playing yeah. well. He's hitting greens. I he's do actually worry a better putter on Poa than Bermuda. Uh, he doesn't have, he's not the, like short off the tee though. He's just not like a big driver. Yeah. No, who is a big driver of the ball though? Actually. Your boy, w- Wyndham Clark. No, he is. But uh, I know I always talk, I talked about last week and you were obviously, you were end up being right. But James Hahn, now no one's going to play him. <laughs> Wait, did he, he miss actually, the guys? I actually don't know. Did he? Yeah, of course he did. He, did. he burned my, he burned my main lineup. <laughs> uh, but that's, that's not even tilting because I like Patrick Rogers. He's getting ownership. I like Wyndham. He's getting ownership. And I like uh, other guys. But James Hahn, like, yeah, he'll prime you. But, like, dude, he's won here. Yeah. But I know that could be a flash in the pan. But since then, I wrote this up in my article. Since his win, he's played here five times and come top 
20, I think like three or four of those. So like clearly it wasn't just a one time playing well. Like he actually played well here. I, I just wish Munoz had more of a <clears throat> driver in his bag. That's the only thing that concerns me. What's his course history here? I think he's made two cuts if I remember because I was looking at the yeah, so two week. like they're two like whatever finishes, but it does they don't matter because it doesn't matter at this season. point. Um, last thing, Aaron, and then we'll kind of Aaron Rye, sixty four, play him. Yeah, right. it's, I was just gonna say, you know, just again coming back to the projections portal. When I inevitably win fifty thousand dollars playing in MNE, I mean it's gonna happen one of these weeks. Like I've had a few good weeks, but I've like just doubled my money. Here's the thing, guys. Again, I'll I'll say it again. Go to Karma Valley. You can't play all these guys. So what I generally do is like this range down below. Like yeah, Sam and I know who all these guys are for the most part. I X out all the guys in blue for the most part when I'm in the 6K range, like most of them, just about all of them. But anytime I see guys pop and I'll just read them off real quick in orange, I leave them in my player pool. Vince Whaley, you just mentioned Aaron Rye, Matthew Neesmith, Wyndham Clark, Mito Pereira, Cameron Davis, um, Dude, Pat Desire. I know. Troy Mary. Um, these are guys, Johnny Vegas, I mentioned him. Harold Barner, we didn't bring him up. All these guys in orange – will 100% be in my player pool. So again, when somebody trolls me and says, we didn't talk about them, they weren't in the content. Again, this is how I make my MME builds. I X out a lot of these guys in blue and I play most of the guys in orange. So I don't know if you've got any final thoughts on this range below, feel free. If not, we'll end the podcast and give our winner and go from there. All, all my second last thing is I'll end with a unbelievably lame and nerdy stat. That I'm pretty sure is right is that at six thousand dollars, Lee Hodges won the USAM here. I think. Wow, I don't even know who he is. So if anyone wants, if anyone wants a super punt, Lee Hodges, it could be wrong. There you go. I think he beat somebody here before too. <clears throat> made the match. Um, All right. Yeah, who's your pick? Give me what's the give us a let's do a winner that's what let's say he, thirty to one or higher. So thirty to one or higher. I'm going to stick with my guns and my conviction. I'm going to try and get you over the ledge here yet again. I'm going to go with Willie Z. I like Willis. him a no, lot okay. in DFS, and I like him in the betting markets. Hmm. What's his betting number now? I'm sure it got hammered. I'm assuming it did. I don't have it in front of me, but I got him at – what did I get him at? I think 30 to 1. <clears throat> hmm. I did 30 to 1. You know, I mean, maybe not the best, but – I like him a lot, man. I really do. I'll stick with hmm, I don't know why I have so much conviction, but I guess I'll stick with my Sung J forty. I don't know I if do I like a good bet. I, it's weird. It's like I wish he was playing better. And also for him, it's he's taking two weeks off as he, I don't know if he's ever done that, but because he plays like fifty one weeks a year. Huh. But maybe he I don't maybe know. he finally I, bought a home and he's moving in. He's he remember he was living with his parents yeah. last year? No, and then he was living like, yeah, parents and like hotel to hotel. Yeah. yeah. I dig it. All right, guys. Um, you know, hopefully we pull the fourth winner in a row here. You know, like I said, all the stuff you guys know, DFSKarma.com, BetKarma.com. Good luck this week, and we will talk to you next week.